Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. I can't believe I'm here. I've been so looking forward to coming back to my um, little studio here and talking to you guys. Um, I've missed you all so very much. Some of you I have actually met in, in person. Um, I make it sound like I haven't been here at all, but it feels like I haven't been here at all because I've been I've been like um, with so many other people um, for real face to face. And um, and then I, I, the, the thought popped in my head, oh, I'm doing the Ren. Oh yes, I'm back here with all you lovely people. And I know that some of you are already uh, waiting with um, uh, bated breath. But one of the things I've also worked out is that there are a lot of people who don't make themselves known. So I just want to give a big shout out to all of these wonderful supporters of the makers who are not always uh, vocal and leaving comments and so on. I mean, I love the comments, don't get me wrong, but um, I just want to acknowledge everybody else who's watching this, maybe not live, but um, afterwards and um, who comes and uh, tell, tells us how much um, all of this means to them. It means so much to me too. Right, let's have a look who is uh, here today. Uh, we've got Gina there, Rachel, Karen, Diane. I can't see that uh, Daniel is part of this, but maybe he's at school. Ashley and um, and Alicia is here um, as the makers. Uh, Sandra, Awkward Prawn. Um, hello, she says, from the Cumbrian Mountains. Um, another Karen. Um, oh, Van der Meer. This is Olga from the Netherlands. Melanie is there. Sarah. Oh, she's weighed it all out and she's ready. Um, if you get our kit, you don't need to weigh anything out, by the way. So I'm going to be using our kit. Um, then we have got Alison, Serena. Hi, Serena. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, Marion. I said that already. Probably Rose is there. Angela. Um, Angela says she's pretending to work while watching this for my weekly felting fix. Have my kit all ready to go. How do you hide your kit while you're at work? I want to see that. We need photos. Carol is there. Um, Bridget from the other side of the world in Australia and Carol in, in Ireland. Julie, Susan, another Bridget. Juliana, ooh, from Brazil. Aha, I like collecting all these countries on, on this YouTube uh, live streams. And uh, Fiona is there. Ah, Fiona was at the needle felting workshop making the wren on Sunday in Harrogate. Hello, Fiona. I'm, I'm holding back to just say how wonderful all the wrens turned out during that um, that workshop. And I'm so pleased. I've run this workshop twice now in the workshop. And um, it's it the, this wren in the workshop. And it's been a really great experience. So I can pass some of the stuff on to you as well. Uh, and they all looked amazing. Um, another Oh no, that's a Birgit. I thought it was another Bridget. Um, this Birgit sounds very German, so I'm just testing the waters here. Erica is there and um, and Donna from California. Gosh, there's a big mix all around the world. I love it. Right, let's look what you're doing. Um, this is the little wren that you're making. He is um, meant to be life-size. He might be a tiny bit bigger than life-size, but um, you could make him smaller by just stabbing him down a little bit more. He's got our... Oh, God, I can't see these legs against my dark shirt. He's got the um, our wire glue in legs. He's got um, eyes, and he's got a silk clay uh, beak as well. Now, what I love about this kit, let's have a look at it. Um comes in a small box and what I love about it in there is that you only get three colors and you can make a whole bird and I just love the fact that that is possible. Um, I, As always in our live streams we have got a giveaway and this um, this week's giveaway which is today um, the 23rd of November live on YouTube and then again on the 25th of November live on Facebook at 7 p.m. You can win yourself a robin kit. Now that robin kit makes two robins and what we want to know is what is your favorite bird and why? Tell us what your favorite bird is and we on purpose left it open not just to British garden birds because we have so many international viewers. So I would love to hear some ex exotic birds, maybe even birds I've, I haven't even heard of or I don't even know because I know there's some beautiful birds around the whole wide world and I used to collect birds not real ones but um, little porcelain birds of all kinds wooden porcelain anything and I remember my favorite were, um, was a, a bluebird it it was a, a little I think it might have even been a Meissner uh, ceramic and then I think one day I just 
had my decluttering bug and I gave them all away. Um, I go through places like this. I like to live minimalistic and then occasionally I just have to clear it all. But I love birds. I grew up with birds as my pets. I wasn't allowed any others. So I had budgerigars and they were my friends. They were my confidant. They were my everything. I just absolutely, they were my companion. They were sitting with me. So I'm a really, really um, great fan of birds. I love them. Just absolutely love them. Right, let's have a look what's inside the kit so we can start. And this is uh, the question of all questions. Have you, how can you notice something different? So this is the kit here. Um, that's the bird you're making. Having a little look, what's going on? Oop, and falling over. Um, and um, um, if you get one of our kits, you're likely to get one of these natural jute, um, um, what's it called, strings. And um, they can be reused, I found all kinds of useful, maybe even Christmas tree decorations to hang them up. Um, the boxes can also be reused, they're nice and sturdy. You get full color instructions step by step. As always, our instructions have got a tape measure on the left hand side that guide you in case you need to measure anything, anything. Um, which in this case you also will. There's a little needle felting guide in there as well, but I'm going to skip that one. And then it takes you through the instructions step by step until you get to the very end where um, the bird is done. We have a template in this particular one here as well, so you can um, get ideas about size and shape for the body, the tail, and then the finished bird as well, and where the markings are going. So, um, as always, I'm starting at the beginning and um, finish at the end. Now, before I do that, I do want to tell you a little story. And um, in, in German, those of you who are watching and they understand German, you will know that this little bird, the wren, in German is called Zaunkönig and, and Zaunkönig translates to the king of the fence and I was really intrigued to find out why is it called a king because um, nobody seems to sort of make a king fuss about the wren here in this country so I I researched it and apparently there is a um, there is a story out there that the wren was nominated the king of the birds and I think it might be a story an Irish Irish um, story and so what happened was that the, all the birds wanted to nominate their king and uh, the criteria was that whichever bird could um, fly the highest and the furthest uh, would be made king. And of course the wren, not being stupid, knew that he was the smallest bird and he could probably not fly very far and certainly not very high. So he hid in the, in the feathers of the eagle and the eagle soared off up in the sky and it flew, flew really, really far and really high until it was so tired it could fly no more, not an inch. And um, that's when the little wren crept out of the feathers and it start continued flying and it declared and it says I flew the furthest and I flew the highest and was therefore declared king of the birds and um, so I really like the idea that you actually put a little crown on your wren we do sell these little crowns um, and I think it looks super cute we have them in gold and in silver these are quite small the smaller crowns we also normally have in stock these slightly larger crowns and um, oh gosh oh, I've got another one thank god <laughs> there not drop that one and um, I actually like this even better it's quite a majestic big crown but for these, you have to wait. You can now use a button on the side of our website where it says notify me when in, back in stock. Just hover over there and then you get a picture comes up. You might have to um, um, enable cookie setting in your in your um, um, whatever device you're using. And then you can put in your email address. And as soon as we put it into stock, you get a notification that tells you then it's back in stock. You can buy it now. But in any case, um, that's the story of the wren and why he was made the king of, um, of the birds. Clever little bird. Um, right. I'm going to unpack now what's in the kit and I share that with you on the overhead camera here. So there's the white wool, which is the main wool that we're using. And then, as I said, just these two colors, in fact, three colors that we're using to create all of the bird different shades and colorways. As um, you already know, I, I'll tell you again, all of our kits are plastic free unless there is something that we can't avoid putting in. Um, but um, mostly achieved through using the eco wool mat, which comes in your kit. You need to use it 
uh, doubled up so you basically lay them on top of each other peel the sticker off and um, and that's your felting mat um, you get little bird legs um, they come in your kit we also sell them separately they're made from um, from steel and they're painted black incidentally these kind of bird legs they can also be used on ceramic birds and they can even survive a kiln so if you are thinking of making birds of another um, in another media then um, this one these birds bird legs are great for that the white ones that we sell are a softer wire and they have got a um, like a cover like a um, a paint cover over it and they're not so good for um, firing in the kiln they, that will melt melt that cover in your kit you get two coarse and one medium needle um, there um, some of them might be marked with a color some of your kits might have shorter or longer needles in there that depends what batch you've got and then you get um, you get two glue in eyes and you get your silk clay and the silk clay is handmade by our staff in our workshop and um, um, yes yeah, so very special right I'm gonna leave um, some of this stuff in here now and um, put the legs away as well so let's start out first of all you're gonna start with the white wool and um, I will follow the instructions because that makes sense. Sometimes in a workshop I go a bit off beaten track. In fact, I have been known even in a live stream that I'm going off beaten track. So you're going to take about one quarter of this wool off. Now this doesn't have to be exact. Just um, if you sort of split that into four parts, then this is probably about one quarter, maybe a little bit more. There we go. And leave that to one side and the rest of it now you're gonna have to roll into um, into sort of an oblong shape and um, it's best to lay this flat on onto your um, mat if you've got some wispy ends that are sort of wanting to come off then just make your shape the biggest one make it nice and flat and then make the smaller shape nice and flat and lay it on top so that the bigger one is always underneath and then all you're going to do is you're going to roll this into an oval ball about five and a half by seven and a half centimeters now this is where your uh, tape measure here on the left hand side of the instructions comes in handy um, because you can already decide um, how big that's going to be now I'm rolling this up but I'm also folding it in so I'm doing both and as I near the end of this wrap I'm going to tease it out more and more so I get lots of neat wraps over my um, shape that's growing and getting a bit bigger but I want to make this let's see Ooh, it's not bad seven and a half by about five centimeters five and a half in diameter it's a little bit skinnier but that's okay I just won't stop it so much um, so this is just a rough guide when you get to the end of these wispy fibers as usual you've heard me say this lots of time these wispy fibers here they need to be really nice and wispy you don't want them to be um, um, sort of fat fibre, fat, a fat slap there then you take your felting needle and you're going to stab this into the main body shape so just fold them over and give them a few stabs if you've never needle felted before needle felting is done by stabbing the needle straight in and out of your shape that tangles up the fibers mind your fingers and wherever you stab the needle is where the reduction takes place so if you continuously stab in one spot you get an indentation if you want to shrink it then you have to stab into um, the short ends to make it come in a little bit more and that's basically how um, we're going to work from now on from on the shape now there's it's not neat it's not even but none of this white wool will show by the end of having done the bird it will be completely covered in a different color so it doesn't really matter that uh, for now we have got some unevenness or some holes and lumps and bumps in there that's absolutely fine right I'm going to have a quick look at what's happening um, here live on um, on the common front because I want to know what your favorite birds are so I'm going to check that out now uh, so Oh, I, I, um, oh, so annoying because I always miss, the, I always lose the bit where I've already, um, uh, I've already read. 
spot. That's right. That's where we were. Uh, ah, I see. I see. Angela says it's the Joyce from <laughs> working from home. There's me imagining you sitting in a big office in your little cubicle, maybe hiding away under an umbrella or something like that. And every time somebody walks past, you have to push it all to one side. You're working at home. Excellent. Um, ah, so Birgit says she's actually Belgian, but half Austrian. There you go. It, um, it um, just goes to show mustn't make any assumptions. Well, it's really lovely to have you here, wherever you're from and whatever your nationality. Uh, so Sarah says, uh, oh, goodness me. She says, can't buy kits at the moment. Her husband banned me from buying more kits until I've used some of the fiber I've already got. He doesn't know someone is getting me the advent calendar for my birthday gift. Oh, just tell your husband to mind his own business. There you go. Um, Rose says, the hellos remind me of the TV show Romper Room when I was a kid. The teacher saying hi to everyone. <laughs> well, I um yes, I have no idea what Romper Room is, but um I try and say hello to everybody, but I never I never manage, so I do apologize now. Um, oh, that's a good idea. Gina says you will have to hang a world map and put pins in 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 to represent all your followers. That's a very good idea. Um, so I remember, oh yes, um, Bridget remembers Romper Room, um, but they never said her name. Well, I'm saying yours now. Bridget, 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 hello. Um, and what else? So Robins are Rose's favourite. Well, that's good then. If you win the Robin kit, you can make yourself one. Sarah says, oh, my favourite is the Kingfisher we see in our local woods. Such vibrant colours. Well, you're very lucky if you see Kingfisher. I only saw boar this morning. <laughs> They're not birds. They're great big smelly, smelly pigs. Um, I thought they, I thought actually at first I thought they were sheep and then, um, no, they weren't. Um, ooh, um, Annette says, I love the kookaburra. Kookaburra, my brother has a very cheeky one in his garden in Queensland. Ooh, I don't know what, I have to look up all these birds so I know what they look like. Um, I'm going for a robin as a robin will appear when a loved one is near. After my dog died, a robin appeared. Oh, that's so nice. I love eagles and owls, but love it when robins follow you around the garden whilst you're working. I did read up on this once, and uh, apparently robins are terribly territorial. Ooh, terribly ter territorial. That sounds quite posh. Um, they um and and so they're like basically they don't like it when you go into their area and they're just there probably telling you get out of my space and uh, we all think that they are there to, because they're friendly <laughs> when they're actually shouting at you because you're impinging on their space. Um, this difficult decision love robins as they're such cheeky wee birds, but also love goldfinch as they have such colorful markings. Um, another one who likes the robins, Marion. Um. Another robin. Oh my goodness, this kit is right up your street then. I do love um, lorikeets as they are fun to feed at the zoo, says Vampire Venom. There are um, parakeets they, um, I saw uh, not so long ago flying around in London, but um, that's probably not lorikeets. There must be something else. My favourite bird is the cardinal, says Donna. A bright spot of red in the snowy winter, sadly not where we are now in um oh, this is this is what i'm going to get myself into such big muddy waters i have forgotten again which state ca is and honestly what am i like my brain's like a sip this is the third time i remember it's the third time i just don't remember what ca stands for oh terrible uh Karen says the problem is i love too many birds i'm snow um i'm a sn I'm Snowy Owl. I love kingfishers, robins, blue tits, and all raptors. I really couldn't choose my favorite all. Always a robin. Another robin. Um, uh, wrens make me think of my great aunt. She was in the Women's Royal, Women's Royal Navy, the wrens, and met her husband because he was on shore leave after his ship sank. Oh, what a lovely story. Many people have been... Oh, CA is California. Obviously, it's not the one that I get muddled up with. That's another one. California, I can remember that. Um, magpies, um, for me, as my dad loved them, I get messages from him when a magpie sings. Oh, nice. Um, my favorite white bird, my favorite bird is a white peacock. I saw one as a child and they are like something from a fantasy novel. Wow, that's amazing. I've never seen a white peacock. Um, probably shouldn't say pheasants, though. Um, Vampire Venom says, hit two in the same month on the same section of the Atlantic. 
many years ago stupid things were trying to run across oh dear i tell you what there are some definitely some kamikaze birds and for me it's the wood pigeons i never get over it how completely stupid they are they never go out of the out of the road um i love my blackbirds not colorful but they sing beautifully they do indeed nut hatches oh i like nut hatches too are my favorite they have bright cheery personalities they're very shy very shy in the uk i don't know if they're like that in uh, in america but i have spent hours trying to <laughs> to watch one come out of his little hole in the wall um to fly off to collect more food for his youngs um oh i've got a uh, narida from puerto rico wow i definitely need a map with pins kingfishers are lovely says vampire venom i um saw them boating in an Aquitaine in 2016. Wow, Trish, Trisha says, one of my favorite birds is the blackbird. I have one who visits to catch worms when I'm gardening. Oh, that's nice. That's what our chickens do. As soon as you start digging, they come running like crazy. Like, is there a worm for me? We had um, the electricians come and they had to dig a channel through the garden. <laughs> and the chickens were helping. I don't think they found that very funny. Um, our oh, vampire said we all had a robin's nest in our shed at the beginning of the year and the baby made made it almost into the house oh we had a robin fly into the house the other day i wasn't at home um lots of people telling me california like shouting at me california stupid woman don't you know what um, what it stands for anyway let's get back to um the um the wren this is how far we got so uh now it's a quest it's a question of shaping and tucking in some of the uh, wispy fibers and getting him nice and and round so if you look at your bird you might already see that there's more of a flat area and more of a round area this is completely coincidental so you might have that already if not decide what's going to be the flat top make that flat and the more rounded base and keep that rounded now the rounded base let's start with this what i do is i hold my bird like that and then you just literally start from one um, end to the other in that round shape it might also be uh, better to sit him up if you want to use your felting mat and do that at one side we'll keep him nice and round and then do the other side as well sometimes what i do is i actually squeeze him in that direction literally and then stop in that area so there's lots of ways of how you can do it by holding him in different ways whatever you do try not to stop yourself that always hurts and then when you've done this then you're going to have to um, straighten his back by stabbing just on the top of that shape all the time you're not just shaping him you're also shrinking the size and make sure whatever you do not to just stop in one direction because you're going to flatten the bird and um, we do want to keep him nice and round so make sure you stop all around whatever you whatever you're working on I'm working on the tummy area again now remember you have got a template at the very last page um, well those of you who've got the kit have got a template and so you can actually um, look at the blue shape if you want to make him nice. It's not bad. We're getting there. Yeah, that's definitely looking good. A little bit more stabbing to um, shape him off. If you need to catch up with the stabbing and you, um, you're a bit behind, because you have got in your kit, you have got um, two coarse and one medium needle, um, you can use two needles at once and they that really really you will see so much difference when you do that it might even be too much so just check it out and then if it's too much stabbing all at once if you if you rob if your wren disappears into nothingness then just go back to one needle but it's definitely a way of catching up if you if you need to sort of just get that shape felted down a little bit faster you can also, if you've got the same length needle in your kit, you can also use a coarse and a medium and use the two together. That that will be absolutely fine too. They don't have to be the same um, thickness of needles. And once you've got the shape the way that you want it, then you're going to um, add a little bit of wool onto his chest to build up the chest a little bit. And um, you've got all of this leftover white wool, which is um, you will have even wool left over at the very end. So this is a, a way of building up a little bit of bulk just in one particular area rather than um, all over. And for this, you just take a pinch or wisp, whichever way you want to call it, and, and do a, a couple so that you've got a nice little wad there. 
and then lay this over onto his chest. I've got really, really um, dark fingers today. I've been writing with a pen and it's been, it's been leaking. <laughs> I promise you, it's, it's just that, not lack of hygiene. Right, felt this down like that on his chest. So you're giving him a rounder, a rounder tummy there. Felt that down. Um, I fasten it always on on the, on, on the outside more before I start felting right into um, so he's um, so Alicia's just said can I show him how can I show you how squishy he is um, as he's not very dense um, and that that so he is quite squishy still but he will firm up a lot more as I am felting just go by the template. That is always what, what um, rather than checking the firmness, go by the template. And in, in the kit, when you make him from the kit, you get a total of eight grams of uh, natural white New Zealand Merino. Now, um, I've, I've obviously taken about one quarter off, so I would have about um, six grams of wool here there or thereabouts. So that's how much he weighs. But I don't want him to be firmly felted yet because as you're coloring him in, that's when you have the opportun opportunity to um, shape him more into the distinct Ren shape as well. So the next thing I'm going, going to show you is how to, you have to remember where you've added the bulk. So make sure that you know that this is, in my case, this is going to be the tail part. This is going to be the chest part. This is the head. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is how you can use just these three colors and get a whole range of colorways. So for now, we're putting the dark brown to one side. We don't need to use that for a little bit. And then you're going to make a really light beige mix. For this, you need smaller amounts of uh, this rust brown than you need of the white. And all you're going to do is you're going to mix these fibers. And what's really important here is that you're teasing these fibers apart um, and laying them on top of each other in the same direction you have been teasing them apart. You're not severing the fibers, so you're not, you don't have to fight this. You can just gently let these fibers slither away from each other and you're giving it um, a new, it's a little bit like a mottled mix, mix because wrens have got sort of quite mottled colors on, the, on, on them. And then once you've got your mix ready, you're going to take you're going to take it and you're going to color in um, mostly the chest and a little bit up the head. Um, what I do is I lay it out almost like you're painting, letting letting the wool sort of again gently um, slither away, lay it out onto his chest first, and then you're going to stab it into place. This in in for your wren could be slightly darker. I noticed that on some of the wrens that I have done, it's been darker. On some of the wrens that I've done, it's slightly lighter. I've got to tell you a nice another wren story, and this is the only time I've ever seen lots and lots of wrens in one place. And um, it was at a previous um, unit where we used to have our um, workshop and warehouse, and they had a little really safe courtyard. It was an old mill and there was a, a stream running through it with uh, some old old trees in there as well. It was only tiny. But um, when I looked out of the window, I could see a whole family of wrens. And it was just the most magical thing. It was a whole, it, it, the, the baby wrens were quite small still, um, but it was so beautiful to watch um, this, these, these wrens running after their parents. And um, I think there must have been about four or five, maybe even six uh, little chicks and um, they looked like miniature versions of their parents but just a tiny bit smaller and they were um, obviously out on a, on a first outing somewhere. Right, whilst I've been talking I've put some of that mix over the head of the wren and I'm felting it down. You may notice that I'm felting in the direction of how the feathers would naturally run so I'm, I'm always going from front to the back um, rather than across sideways because that helps with the I want to say with the streamlining of the bird, but it always helps to felt the fibers down in the direction of how you imagine the feathers are running. And um, I'm going to go a little bit further back. I um, need to do a bit more of a mix here. Take a bit more, trying to match that mix up. Yeah, mix it all up and apply that in the same way. So I'm going 
all along the tummy, the whole length of the tummy. There. Felt that down, reaching up towards the tail. We're not covering the wings and area and we're not covering the um, um, the top of, of the bird with this colour. Only around the tummy, up the chest, over the head and then along the rounded tummy area up towards the tail as well. Right, and that is just mixing the fox rust brown with um, with the white wool that you've used for the main body. And don't worry if you've got um, sort of a bit of a, like I have here now, a bit of a, a stronger streak running through it. Um, that's that's okay, they are quite mottled, the birds, so that's absolutely fine. So there's the bird covered now. As I said earlier, some of the ones that I've made before are a little bit stronger colored. Um, some are less, actually. And um, there you go. Little bit stronger so it's not um it's fine if it if yours is a little bit stronger colored than um than mine i don't know why i've just felt like not making it so dark um every time you attach something at one end you will find that you're gonna have to readjust another part of 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 what you're doing so in my case i'm having to uh, needle felt um the top flat a little bit and the and making the the bring the sides in a bit just to bring in in alignment with the tummy that I've now felt it down a little bit more and that is why we don't felt it down so solidly because we are actually sh shaping and sculpting it whilst we're adding um, the, the details onto him. So that's the bird so far just starting to cover the um, important bits. Let's go back to the front camera um, just to remind you, you can win yourself a robin kit, makes two robins, a maker's robin kit and all we want you to do is to tell us what's your favourite bird and why and um, we do the same again on Thursday at 7pm um, on Facebook so if you're watching then then um, hello into the future or right now um, and what else have I got to tell you, so next live stream, let's do that, next live stream it's the beginning of the animals in the wood and I, I wish I could tell you so much more about this but I don't I can't because I'm, I don't want to give it away for those who have managed to get an animal um, in the woods um, Advent Needlefeld project pack but whatever it will be will be part one and of course it stays on um, on YouTube so you can you can do it yourself later and we will also once we are um, we are actually live streaming we will put the details of what you need um, on on this particular um, link as well so you can catch up we're not keeping you completely in the dark um, you can make this project in the future but it is a it is a big wall hanging it's probably about that big I'm looking at it right now actually. It's so nice, honestly, you'll love it. Yeah, but you can't see it. So you can watch it on Tuesday next week and we this comes in four parts. It's always slightly after um, the first, uh, the first, second, third and fourth of Advent because they're obviously always on a Sunday. And the first of Advent is this Sunday, would you believe it? That's the countdown, four weeks to Christmas. And then the fifth Sunday after that, that's when Christmas is, so um, it's not it's not very long at all now. So I'm hoping that you've um, had chance to get all your crafting done before Christmas, so you can gift people. It's not too late, um, because we've got some um, exciting news as well. We're we're always joining the the. We're not particularly keen. Not because we don't want to give you a good deal, but just because we just think it's a bit of a mad rush when um, Black Friday and all the rest happens. So we call it Rainbow Friday. And instead of Cyber Monday, we call it Fiber Monday. Um, but of course, we have got deals as well, and they will be starting as of tomorrow. So if you uh, want to keep a keen eye out on our social media sites, we will put these in stories. You get a special discount code, and there will also be... Um, there will also be a newsletter going out to that effect. So um, watch out. Um, there's a, a very generous um, surprise waiting for you. And um, if you're watching this on Thursday, you probably know it already, but I can't tell you because it's um, a day too early here on YouTube. Right, um, what else can I tell you? I can also tell you that we have still got spaces in our winter retreat and I can't 
say it often enough. By the way, I'm talking to you while I'm grabbing my glue bottle because I left it on my other desk. So if you hear that my voice changed, that's because I'm moving away from the mic. I can't stress enough what a wonderful event this is. And you will be making uh, your own design dragon. It doesn't have to be like the one that you can see on screen right now. It can be a different color. It can be vicious. It can be one dragon. It can be a copy of a dragon that you um, that you already know. It can be, um, though we're not allowing um, people to be um, copied. It has to be a dragon dragon. And um, it can be just your design. The main thing is that you get all the materials to make it. Um, you get a whole tool set, like really nice tools. We guarantee you will end up with an earth mat, um, as all of our retreaters always end up with one and nice, nice tools, good quality tools as well for you to take home. Amazing food. This venue, people are still reminiscing about as something as, as basic as roast potatoes. <laughs> but I can tell you people always say, and those roast potatoes. Um, it's just, I, I'm, I mean, I'm sure we are remembered for more than the roast potatoes there, but it is, it is what I'm trying to say is it's really lovely food. It's lots of fluff, lots of fun, new friends, food, um, fresh air if you choose to step outside and enjoy the beautiful setting that this venue is nestled in in the Golden Valleys in Gloucestershire and the Cotswolds and um, all the accommodation is paid for and um, yeah that's it basically we have got spaces left if you are still struggling to find something for Christmas put put this to your loved ones and say this is what I want to do um, in January when everybody's feeling a bit blue you'll be off to an, um, an even better event than um, Christmas so that's basically what we are what we are offering and what we're promising so please get in touch info at themakers.co.uk we used to have lots of testimonials on our website but somehow they've disappeared and I don't really know where they've disappeared to but trust me if you um, if you could read them you'd be there wanting to sign up now and let's go back to the overview camera because I want to get on with that little wren so the next thing I'm going to do is, is I'm making the tail I'm still only working with these two colors and this time I'm making a darker color of the mix so I'm using probably in reverse order I'm using less white and more of the rust, rust fox brown and I'm going to mix that two into a new colorway this rust fox brown is just right for um, the wren. Again, I'm mixing it so that the colors are keep running in the same direction. They're all nicely lined up. And um, and then the next thing you're going to do is, and I need my felting mat for that, you're going, you have this batch of wool that you've just made. Keep it nice and flat. And then you're going to fold this in half. So you've got a folded edge here at the top. And then you're just folding the sides in to have, um, um, roughly about a, um, a two and a half centimeter wide tail here um, and now I'm going to felt that flat so that means you have to lay it on your felting mat and I'm using the felting mat that you will get in your kit just to, to show you that it does work these little mats even though they're small they are very good to use for uh, projects now you have to tease this off very gently because you are felting it onto the mat I'm holding onto the wispy ends here that I haven't um, folded and they're sort of just sticking out and they're not just great for holding onto but they have a purpose uh, later too and to reduce the width of your tail you just have to stab in into it sideways same if you want to shrink it down lengthways there is a template on your last page um, which you can look at the longer you keep it on there and stab it the more it gets fastened into the felting mat but the fibers are also tangling up um, on, on themselves so you've got there you go nice little shape of a tail there just checking it against the template that's not bad that's pretty good actually there you can see it too not just me there we go exactly I might just round it off a little bit at the front even when it's attached you can still work on it that's the great thing about needle felting and uh, nothing's ever entirely finished until you decide that's it now putting it to one side done so once the tail has been needle felted you're going to open up um, the wispy fibers that are here at the end and when I say open up you open them up in all 
directions so that you end up with a, a little platform there like that and that will sit now on your bird's bum so you stroke the fibers down the sides and all around the, the shape of the bird and then you're going to stab them in by stabbing into these wispy fibers first all along the bird that way you're fastening the tail on now you're still sculpting the bird you're actually making that part a little bit smaller and um, if the tail is really long you've got the option to either stab into it at a, a shallow angle that will pull it in that way um, if it's really well felted and really 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 already um, well felted and very long that you could also cut it uh, make it shorter um, if you're deeply unhappy with the tail pull it off and start again you've got enough wool to make a second tail there's no reason why you have to persevere with something just make your life easy nobody's going to judge you for having um, two attempts at a tail even three it's fine there will be enough wool I can guarantee you to make three even if you need to right whilst i'm felting this down i'm felting the shape down of the bird too and um, what you need to do is with a wren, you need to have that tail nice sticking up because that's one of the very distinct markings of, of the wren that they've got sort of the tail sticking up. Right, the next thing you're going to do is you are going to add a, a similar color as you did um, with, with a tail. You're going to add that all over the top of the bird now. So I'm going to have to make a very similar colorway now, which means more of the brown, less of the white. Mix it, work in small batches, make another one if you need to. It's always better to do that than to um, fight the fibers and, um, and work with lots and lots of fibers. And now you're going to paint the rest of the bird, especially the top with that color. You're obviously not painting it but it feels like I'm painting it and it should be um, nice enough to make an, a continuous um, like a nice transition from the top of the head to the um, to the bottom of the head where the lighter color is but also a nice transition from the dark tail to the rest of the body so again we're, we're not felting the wings on yet we're just getting um, the top of the bird covered now and again work in the direction that the feathers are running and make more wool if need be less is always more um, put less on and make more to add more rather than piling it on and then your needle can't cope with it and it's all because all of this this cover needs to look more like a dusting than um, a solid cover so work with um, small amounts and um, get it felted on there we go. The, this part is white because the wings are going to go. There's no point covering it. I'm just going to make another little bit of a mix. Put more over the head. Am I going? Am I following these instructions correctly? Uh, oh, oh, I think. I think. Uh, take a pinch of the same wool mix that you use for the tail, and cover the top of the head and back of it. That's right. Yeah, we're still, I'm still doing the, the right thing. Yeah, sorry, I'm just making sure I'm, I'm, I'm doing it right. So I'm covering a little bit of the, um, bit, bit more of the top there because there were patches that were bare. Felt that down and in a minute I'm going to read a few more comments because you obviously all love birds. They are amazing. I actually, when uh, was it this morning or was it yesterday? I think yesterday I had to go out really early and it was definitely still dark. Oh yes, I know. I came back from, from one of the shows and I, I, um, I arrived at half past 11 the previous night and it, I was so tired. I, um, I brought back some treats for my family. It's usually food be, um, because yeah, it's just usually food. And, um, and so I, I had I left them in the car. So I thought, oh, I get up early and get them in the house before everybody gets up, and then um, they they'll be there and they could have something for breakfast. 
and when I um, got down uh, into into the garden and it were, um, and then into the car park, um, I heard the ravens calling. And you see, if you ask me what my favorite bird is, I would say ravens because I just think they're such um, amazing birds. They're so big, and they um, they're so. I I'm I always feel very privileged when I actually see ravens. I didn't see them that morning, but I heard them, and they're. They are always um, the highest in the sky. They're never below other birds. Uh, that's what I noticed. And they're always sitting in the highest tree if there's one day sit in it. Um, yeah, anyway, right, there we go. Just been working a little bit more on the top there while I was chatting. Um, could put a little bit more here. Just a little bit more, just a tiny bit of mix. Cover that area, there. Now the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to add the wings onto the bird and this is the first time where you will be using the darker brown in your mix and you're actually using all three colours. So if you've got a mix left over that um, you've used for the tail and the top, then um, use that um, and mix a little bit of brown into it or start over with all three colours and get, um, this is the darkest mix that you will be making. So the wings are distinctly darker than um, the rest of the body. So mix that. If it's not dark enough, then add a bit more of the brown and get that mixed together. And then split it in half. Lay one half on one side of the bird. And um, this is where you're going to have to start looking at the bird from the front because now you're, you're um, putting the shape of the wing onto the bird. So felt the outside of it onto, onto your um, bird first and then tuck the fibers into what's that shape. <clears throat> you can leave the wing sort of slightly softer felted so it's more of a 3D feature. But um, when you add the second wing you're definitely going to have to look at the bird from the front because um, symmetry is quite important when you make your bird. So you want the, the wing which is here at the moment, you want this to be exactly the same on this on the other side. So um, get it felted on for now and then adjust it once you had a look where it needs to go. Love that love that sound of crunch, 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 crunch. So nice. I did actually do some knitting while I've been away, believe it or not felt like knitting as well so I knitted myself a snood and before you ask no I never follow a pattern I just make it up as I go along um, and it, did, it does look really nice I'm quite impressed I've, I've bought some really nice cotton yarn from the knitting and stitching show in Harrogate um, organic cotton and it's super soft it's just I always thought cotton is just cotton but that one definitely is the softest I've ever had really beautiful Right, so um, this looks pretty symmetrical, maybe a little bit down here. And that's the wings on. And now I'm going to um, go, the next bit is the, is the um, what do you call it, beak. And then we're going for the eyes. Right, but before all of this, I'm just going to check in how um, we're doing with everybody's, um, everybody commenting. Uh. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's good. Parakeets in London are ringnecks. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, Sandy says, I think it's going to be a flamingo as my favourite bird. Oh, nice. I had a little robin trapped in my kitchen last week. My, my hubby had to catch it, help it get back outside. We still see it in the garden regularly. Oh, I must have been the week of robins getting trapped in the kitchen because that's happened to us as well. Ooh, Vampire Venom says she's just had Facebook notify me that she's a top fan of the makers. Wow. Um, so you can join our Everyone a Maker group. Share with us uh, the, the, um, your makes that, <clears throat> that you have done um, from our kits, ideas, projects, books, whatever. And uh, we would love to see them and make all the ooh and ah noises. I love seeing them. 
Um, Erica says, I love all singing birds. Always like the song, uh, sound of the whistle in the trees. Um, what a difficult question. Can't say a favorite. No. Oh. Um, awkward prawn says, I've got one of those in my... Ah, this is a three needle felting um, a tool we're talking about now. We're not talking about robins. She didn't get a robin in her last order. This is what Alicia has been talking about. It does speed your work up. I haven't actually used it on this project. I, I, I always forget, forget I have the eight of these tools, but it does really, really work so well. Thank you for reminding me. I um, Yes, definitely. This is such a must-have tool. It, it, um, every time I use it, it still surprises me how amazing it works. And especially if you want to get your shape felted down a little bit faster. Now I can't stop stubbing. I will, I will, I will. Okay. Um, oh, <laughs> my goodness me, what I've just read. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, Sarah says, the wren, wren will be for mother-in-law, still a pony to make too. Sorry, I'm just randomly um, skipping to the comments. I just thought your mother-in-law is a wren. And I thought, is she called wren? Mm. <laughs> but you're making it for your mother-in-law. That's a lovely thing to do. Melanie says, I bought my wren kit at, uh, at the show in um, Harrogate on Saturday. I'm making it for my mum. Oh, that's lovely. Um, I've almost got the resin pieces made. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This is obviously I'm missing. I'm not going to read on because I'm missing the, the first part of that. Um, so the um, we don't know yet what we're doing with our Makers Box projects, but the Red Panda may, may very well become, that's the next, that's the December um, Makers Box. The Red Panda may well become a kid. Um Elaine says, favorite birds are birds of prey, so majestic, but particularly the red kite. Oh, I love the red kites. I've watched them in the sky and they are, they love when it's really windy. And I, I don't actually know whether a kite, like we fly in the wind, has been uh, named after a red kite or whether the red kite was named after a kite, we fly in the wind, because they are the masters of, of, of air, whatever goes on up there, turbulence, um, What's it called? Oh, I can't think of it now. What um, the different um, air levels and and things that are happening, and where they just glide. They never flap their wings at all. They just play and they go skydiving down, and then they swoop up again. And you can almost you can if you imagine they have these laughters on their faces. They absolutely love it. Um, anyway, I've got to get on with my wren. So let's go um, to the overhead uh, camera. Right in your wren kit, you get. Um, um, a silk clay beak made by us and you get little glue in eyes. Let's start with a the beak. There you go. That's what it looks like. So you're going to have to poke a hole in the face of your um, wren. Doing this, you can either use an awl or as I am doing, use a felting needle. However, the felting needle is prone to come out at one point. So have your fingers way out of the way. Give it a little jiggle only when the needle is um, barely visible. Put the beak in there. There you go, like that. And then all you need to do is add a dab of glue behind the beak and let it dry. So don't take the beak out again. Let it dry really nicely um, as part of the part of the wool so that it's really close in there. And then you're going to put, put um, the same, you're putting the eye eyes in there on the same level as the beak or thereabouts. Insert the thing there, the thing meaning the pin, and then do this on the other side. Look at your bird so that you can see the eyes are on the same level on this side too. When the eyes are on the same level, or only then, and when everything looks really symmetrical, which it does, then you're going to add a dab of glue behind the eyes as well. Oh gosh, this is a rather big dab of glue. Let's take a bit off. The glue dries, uh, well, the glue that I'm using dries completely dry. Um, I mean, yes, that as well, and clear. And um, and so I'm not so worried that there's a bit, bit of a spillage around the eyes. 
By the way, these glue bottles, I really, I do love them. This one's getting to an end. Um, yeah, we use them all the time. They have a nice fine nozzle. And um, and because we don't use it that often, it doesn't matter so much. You know, the, um, big glue bottles have a can often dry out, but with a little one, it doesn't happen so much. So, let's felt this. If you're needle felting the beak, then um, you need a, a bit of dark wool. I could show it to you here. And you just, um, very similar to how you've done the wings, you have a, but a much smaller amount of wool, obviously. Keep that flat, fold it in half, so keep the edge at the top, and then roll it really tightly into um, sort of a little cone shape, as much as you can. And then all you do is you just felt the end of the fibers down the end of that beak shape down, keep turning it, felting it down until you've got a, um, a nice little felted end of a beak. At the moment it looks very fluffy and the wool that I'm using is very hairy so if you've got a wool that's less coarse it works better. But I'll show you um, what you can do to, to stop it from being hairy. There are two things you can do. You can either use some scissors and neaten it out by just cutting the wispy bits off. You can also twist it in your fingers, make it a lot neater and then all you do is you um, broaden out these wispy fibers and felt them right into um, the head of the wren. You can then cover this whole beak with uh, PVA glue and leave it to dry. It needs to be absolutely saturated. If you don't like sticky fingers, don't even do it. But you put the glue on there and then you just squeeze it right into it so that all of the, all of the wool gets really um, saturated in glue and all of the fibers stick to um, together. And it makes, when it's dry, it makes a really solid, um, has a really solid feel to it. And then it looks more like a, a smooth beak as well. Hope that's helped. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate um, my wren. So the wrens have sort of distinct marks on their wings. They have way more distinct marks than I'm actually adding onto there, but that is one of them. Um, by the way, the, the tail of the wren could be a little bit longer. So you could either just tease it out a little bit or you could add a little bit more um, um, onto it if, if that's what you want. Or you just leave it as it is. And um, to add the details, um, so you um, you can use the white and add a tiny, tiny bit of um, um, the rust brown into it or just use the white. In any case, it needs to be a really pale mix. And then you can add tiny little flecks onto the tip of the wing underneath, um, on the under part of the wing, if that's a word. I'll show you what I mean. So just crumple, crumple them up and then all you do is you just put them here in that area there. If they're not distinct enough then um, use a lighter lighter wool and maybe just add four or so. Add that on the other side as well. Oh, sticky fingers touching his face. So you can just add these into there. I'm not even making them, um, shaping them too much. I'm just letting the needle grip the wool and felt in. Do an insert. And in fact, that's the fourth there. And then repeat that on the other side. And then also what, what you need to do is you need to give your wren these swooping eyebrows. You can, again, use definitely use a nice and white um, mix, if not white, on its own. I've, I've done both. And um, to me, it, they look a little bit like they've got glasses on from the 50s. Um, first of all, put um, an eye line underneath the eye by rolling a bit of wool up. If it's too big, just keep taking bits, bits off. So you're actually felting like a, a semicircle underneath the eye. Like that. If it's not um, distinct enough, then do um, use just white wool. I've made my, my uh, wren quite light coloured 
um, underneath. And then you do the same at the top, but instead of going round the eye, you're actually um, going a bit off, off the beaten track and giving it a swirly kick towards the top of the head, the back and top of the head. So it's going that way. I'm just going to show you this with um, one of the wrens, but it's a little bit more obvious there rather than the one that I've got here and that one here. So they have got quite a distinct um, mark on there. And um, and then the only thing that's left to do is, is to um, fit the legs in. Now, the legs, um, they do take a little bit, and you obviously you can still sculpt and shape the bird and felt it down where it needs felting down. You have got the finished, you have got a, um, a, a template on the very last page here, so you can get a good idea of where you're heading with this. It's actually not bad. I think he needs a bit more stabbing in here on his bum. And now he's quite firm. He's like there's still air in it, but is a lot less. He's, he's become quite firm. And I'm I'm uh, to reduce the size. I really need to stab quite deep because the surface is definitely firmly felted. So to give him more of that rounded bottom, um, I need to reduce the. I need to just stab it in a bit more. Oh, I've got my three needle fitting tool. That will speed things up. There. It's quite nice when it becomes that sort of firmer shape. I quite like um, the firmer, firmer felting. And um, with the legs, this is where I was at, the legs, um, so the legs need to go, um, you, again, you've got your template here as well, so the legs need to go in at, a, at an angle towards, sorry, towards the, the front of the bird, because they have the knees the other way around than us. So um, you need to bend the leg in, there, towards the toes, do this on both, you should be able to just use your fingers to do that, like that helps if it's straight there like that and then because the the legs are pointing towards that way you also need to make the holes underneath the bird in that exact way the legs are actually really quite far back so when you make the hole the leg will fit in and and because you're making it that at that angle they will then be flat can you see that? I don't. Um, I hope that's okay on the overhead camera. Do the same on the other side. And when you are ready to fasten the legs in, hang on, I just need to do that properly. That was a bit of a half-hearted attempt there. When you're ready to um, glue the legs in. Make sure that the bird is actually standing on both feet evenly because now you've got the chance to bend the legs or reposition them. Um, oh, that's come out again. It is quite fiddly, um, which is why I'm showing you it live on camera so um, nobody can say I don't do these bits live. There. When you have got the legs in there, like that, like that, make sure that the bird stands flat on these feet. And then when, when he does, tape these toes together. So that will look like, stay there, that will look like that. When you tape the toes together, it will look like that. I don't know if they're solid yet. I did this earlier. Um, and then when they when and then all you do is you just squirt loads of glue into the hole, like literally put the glue bottle in. Once you have done this, I've actually used um, florist tape for this because I couldn't find my cellar tape. It's probably somewhere in the house. Children have got it, no doubt. I've used florist tape, which come which as you know you can stretch it and it becomes sticky. I'm just hoping that the legs have now settled in don't want to manipulate them too much let's get these separated there so only do this when the legs are really really solid i think i'm a bit um i'm a bit too soon with mine but um 
they're solid enough not to swivel anymore, which is why I'm being very, very careful. Oh, might have just un... Right, and then the bird will stand because you tested that earlier there. And then you can um, you can now bend the, the, the toes individually so that they are going to be at a more natural, um, you know, they're sort of more natural, they curve. And um, you have to do that once the birds, once the legs are really, really dry. And that basically is all you need to do. Now the, the legs for this bird, I'm not gonna do here now because it's gonna to take too long for the glue to dry and put the tape around it and all the rest of it. So we've got a bit of a carnage of a bird here now. But um, the idea is that the legs will be fastened in eventually, solid, and then you can bend them or not, if you don't wanna bend them, if you want them to be flat, flat feeted, flat footed. Wrens, that's fine too. Right, and that's the wrens done. I'm going to put them here. There's going to be more and more, more and more uh, accumulating in my collection of wrens. Let's put them that way. Um, this one needs a def definitely help with his feet. He's a bit pigeon toed at the moment, and he hasn't got any feet at the moment, so he can sit there too. There we go. He's almost almost standing properly just needs a little bit of attention oh oh dear i'm fapping now come on just for the camera no he's not having it okay ah there that makes it go in again so just make sure that the legs are bent properly because you can actually just whilst they're in there you can still manipulate them yourself by just bending them a little bit around. Um, he's standing now, so that's the main thing. I won't touch him again. And that's all the wool I've got left. Um, so still quite a bit left, so you can uh, make him even firmer and, and bigger if, if need be. And um, and that's basically um, completes the wren. And now, Alicia, um, go and pick your winner um, for today's live stream. Just checking, so I've told you about next time. Um, for, oh, I also need to tell you whilst Alicia is picking a winner, we have got spaces also on the workshop with Sophie Wheatley. Now, Sophie Wheatley is really well known for exquisite pet portraits and her teaching of, of you making um, a realistic looking um, picture of a, a pet. This doesn't have to be a dog. It can be a cat. It can be a hamster. It can be a, a duck. It can be anything. And she's also um, offering a second weekend where you can make an animal um, in nature too. So do um, do get in touch again info at themakers.co.uk if you're interested the places are filling up if we get booked out then we will um, offer a third weekend but do get in touch so that we have an idea of where we are with numbers and um, we have got a winner and it's Ashley Ashley P. Well done, Ashley, for um for getting your Robin kit sent out to you. Just drop us again, drop us an email, email info at the makers. Let you know, let us know that you've been today's winner, and then we will get this kit out sent to you to you um immediately. And well done. Thank you everybody for watching. Give us the thumbs up if it's not too late. A uh, thumbs up means that you. Um, I don't really know. Um, on on your on your screen, there should be um, a thumb that you can press. Thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done already. Uh, then you get notification of our notifications of our tutorials. We are not a commercial channel. We don't. Um, we have there's no adverts, and um, we just want you to enjoy watching um, free tutorials. Get into needle felting or other um, crafting. We do doll making as well. I haven't done any for a little while, but there's lots on our playlist. And soon, very soon, we will be unwrapping our uh, next month's uh, subscription boxes as well. So do tune in for that as well. But otherwise, if not before, I see you on Tuesday at one o'clock um, at the same time again. And for those of you who are watching Thursdays, I will see you on Thursday uh, the following week too. That's all from me. Thank you so much for um, watching and um, well, stay safe. And if you're coming to any of the shows I'm going to, I might even see you face to face. 
take care everybody bye